Hi, and welcome back to Hacker 101. In this session, we're going to be talking about threat modeling. Threat modeling is a process to determine which threats are important to an application and find points where defenses might be lacking. There are many types of threat modeling, but in this session, we're going to focus on two of them. The first is the threat modeling approach taken by most large corporations as part of their security process. The latter is a lightweight approach that I've refined over the years, inspired heavily by my collaborators. There are three key reasons to perform threat modeling. The first is to achieve better coverage in your testing. It'll help you ensure you test all the entry points. The second is to find more interesting and more valuable bugs. Have a testing game plan before you dive in. And finally, you'll waste less time on dead ends. You can eliminate entire classes of bugs before you start any testing. First, we'll talk about the heavyweight approach to threat modeling. This approach starts with decomposition. That is, you document each component of the application and its infrastructure, then draw data flow diagrams that show how all of these connect and interact. You also document and draw privilege boundaries, showing where data flows from low to high privilege or vice versa, and ensuring that the proper controls are in place. Next, you develop threats for each portion of the application. These threats get linked to the components that would be affected in the case of such an attack. Then you rank these threats by means of one of the objective measures of severity, of which there are many currently in use. However, this, ironically, tends to be one of the most difficult and least objective portions of this approach. It's difficult to think of every threat that can affect an application, and every security professional will come up with a different set of threats. Finally, you determine and document any countermeasures that may already be or can be put in place to prevent such an attack. This is a valuable tool for developers and internal security teams who have access to internal documentation, code, and developers themselves. But for anyone else, it requires too much time and it doesn't give you a decent game plan for testing. That makes it essentially useless for bug bounty hunters or external software security consultants. If you're not managing a large development team in a large corporation, this is probably not the approach for you. Now let's talk about a lightweight approach to threat modeling. First step, make a list of every entry point you can find. One simple approach, and my favorite, is to enable burp proxy and then use every single function of the application that you can find for every access level that you have. Then you think through every asset in which an attacker might be interested, along with the business impact of its compromise. This includes user PII and passwords, admin panel access, transaction histories, source code, database credentials, and more. Anything that would impact the business if it were accessed, deleted, or otherwise touched by an attacker. Once you have this, you can develop a game plan. You rank the entry points in order of perceived value. For instance, an entry point which takes little to no user data will be much less valuable than one that takes a bunch of user input. And at this point, you'll have enough information to eliminate vulnerability classes much of the time. For instance, if it's a support knowledge base, CSERF on any end user page will likely give an attacker nothing of value. Those bugs don't even need to be tested for. Included with this video is a threat model I built for the HackerOne site itself from an unauthenticated perspective. It's very simple, as these things should be, and doesn't include a lot of details like target parameter names. Those are things you end up annotating yourself as you gauge the important portions of an app during testing. My suggestion is to take that and add the authenticated parts. Log in and map out the things that should change post-login, for instance, the report submission form. This will give you a good idea of how to integrate those things when you build your own threat models. Finally, the big recommendation is to restrict yourself. You should be able to handle most applications in under an hour. If you find yourself going substantially over that, you're probably overthinking it and should probably reconsider your approach. Of course, if you're dealing with an app with hundreds of different functions, it's probably going to take longer. This is where time and experience will help you. The more often you do this, the easier it'll be. As always, thanks for watching and happy breaking.